Sir, and good morning to you. What do you think about Trey Gowdy's comment there about making a terrible witness? Yeah, he's a former prosecutor, and I'm sure he knows that lots of uh, witnesses that he turned to testify on behalf of the government had previously lied. Rick Gates uh, was described as a liar by uh, Mr. Manafort's uh, defense, and every prosecutor knows that the jury has to focus on somebody who may have lied and now determine whether he's telling the truth. But I'd wonder what Trey Gatti would have said about John Dean, who admitted to obstruction of justice, lying, hush money. I, I don't. I don't think he was asked that question. But you know, but if, that is if, the, if Cohen's a proven liar, the, the, the case that Gatti's making is even if he were to go before a jury, who would believe him? after the admissions of yesterday. So as a former prosecutor, when he's not being partisan and being a politician, which is what he always does, he would say, we have to have corroboration when we flip a witness who's previously lied because we know the defense is going to use that attack. And what Mr. Mueller has done is every single thing so far, he's had corroboration, documents, emails, backup, other witnesses. On the issue of campaign finance violation, which was hush money before the election, uh, Mr. Mueller, uh, rather the Southern District, now yesterday presented uh, several witnesses within the organization as well as a publication that corroborate Mr. Cohen's version. And you, you call it hush money, and there's different people have a different reading of the law on that. Here's what the president said about this just about 90 minutes ago, okay? He said, I never directed Michael Cohen to break the law. He was a lawyer and is supposed to know the law. It is called advice of counsel, and a lawyer has great liability if a mistake is made. That is why they get paid, despite that many campaign finance lawyers have strong and on it goes. And there were three more tweets that went with that. I don't have much time to get into that. I think I have some specific questions. Can I do a quick answer you, you on You may. It? Go ahead, because I, I've got a number here that I want to get through in the next three minutes. Mr. Trump, uh, like a lot of people, can blame his lawyer, but on Air Force One, he looked at the media, of which you're a member, and he said, no, I know nothing about the Stormy Daniels payment. The next day, Rudy Giuliani contradicted him, so the credibility of that voice is a subject. Come, come back to Cohen here, and I, I appreciate the comment on that. Let's see where that goes. Uh, that was not under oath. It was a comment. You can call him nope. a liar, but... Uh, it, I'm just Th saying that was not in a court of I law. I use the word credibility yeah, of did, the source understood. of that. Did Cohen know at the time that he was making a payment that it was against the law? He said to the prosecutors, yes, I knew it was about the election. That's what we talked about. And that's what we now know that the so publication if he, involved. If he knew about. it was illegal, did he tell the president at the time? I, I don't know what his advice was to Mr. Trump, but on this tape that I happen to be part of playing on another station, Mr. Trump discussed the payment, said the word cash, and knew it was about keeping Ms. McDougal quiet. So the tape itself shows a consciousness by Mr. Trump, but the purpose of the payment was to keep her quiet. Wall Street Journal, he declined to answer questions, meaning Cohen, about other areas of investigative interest to federal prosecutors. If Michael Cohen has more information, the assumption on behalf of many is that he's trying to protect that information, keeping it, that he knows more about the president than he's telling. Is that true, or is Michael Cohen trying to protect himself? I don't know the answer to that. I do know that Mr. Mueller and Mr. Cohen spent, and his team, Mr. Mueller's team, 70 hours at seven different sessions, and it was all about President Trump and collusion and the core issues, as Mr. Mueller said in his sentencing memo, the core issues of the investigation. I doubt there's anything that was held back about those core issues, or Mr. Mueller wouldn't have been as complimentary as he was to. Well, on the Mueller matter, Rudy Giuliani had an interview last night with Yahoo. He said, in part, our strategy is to do everything we can to convince Mueller to wrap the damn thing up, and if he's got anything, show us that with Yahoo News. Your, your client made some bad decisions. You no longer represent him in a legal sense, of course. But the president had nothing to do with tax evasion with regard to Michael Cohen. He had nothing to do with making false statements with regard to Michael Cohen. So as you look at this, what was the president's connection? Well, not anything to what Michael said yesterday in court, which is to 100 percent take responsibility, not blame anyone. And it was a quite moving statement to me knowing him. And my not representing him as a lawyer is because the case is over, not because of any abandonment. I am here as his friend and his advisor. When, when did you talk to him last? Uh, a day and a half ago, how's not he, yesterday. How's he doing? He was doing pretty badly. His family is uppermost on his mind, and you could see as I watched the TV yesterday, this is a devastating experience. 
I've gotten to know John Dean for 20 years. People doubted his credibility, called him a liar and lots of things. He wrote a book called Blind Ambition. And there's a lot here that I find similar, especially when Michael Cohen tells the truth about Donald Trump. A lot of these decisions Michael Cohen made on his own, you would admit. His statement yesterday, yes, I would, Bill. His statement yesterday did it better than I could ever do. He took personal responsibility, didn't blame anyone. Uh, he did say that he changed his mind about Mr. Trump, and now he's turned, and that's a subject to people challenging. Two, two more questions. He reports to jail in three months. Will, will he testify before Congress before he goes to jail? He won't do anything until Mr. Uh, Mueller is done with his work and his report. But the answer I've said publicly is that when the time comes, if he's invited to tell the truth about Mr. Trump, probably to Congress, I believe, I can't be certain, that he'll say yes. Last question. If this all began as collusion, many people may look at this and ask you, Lanny Davis, where's the collusion? And well, would say? we have... Um, much more to know about what Mr. Mueller, he's a silent submarine, leak-proof, driven by facts, and he will someday tell Was us the full story. Was there any collusion on what we heard? As of Mr. now, there's circumstantial evidence of many contacts with Russian government intelligence officials between the Trump campaign and them. We do not yet have the final case on cooperation with a quid pro quo of meddling to help Trump get elected, which we know the intelligence community tells us, versus favors done for Mr. Putin, although we do know about a proposal for a penthouse in Moscow. We shall see on where that we shall see. where that stands. Lanny, thank you for coming in thank today. Thank you, Bill. Lanny Davis, thank, thank you. you. Sandra. A troubling new report that Iranian hackers targeted nuclear scientists and U.S. Treasury officials. The latest we will have.